Hi there. So far, we've introduced to you two health-promoting functions of HMOs, their prebiotic effect and their antibacterial and antiviral effects. Today, we'll talk about the third amazing health benefit, the last in this series, how HMOs support the growing immune system. The gut is a crucial part of our immune system. About 70% of our immune cells are actually located in the gut lining, interacting with the multitudes of microbes residing in our gut. When babies are just born, their gut-residing immune cells meet foreign materials for the very first time. During the first couple years of life, the gut immune cells slowly learn how to detect and respond to different microbes, from beneficial ones to pathogens. In some extreme cases, naive immune systems can lead to such severe inflammation of the gut that infants develop necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC. NEC is a leading cause of infant death in the U.S., affecting about two newborn babies per 1,000 births per year in North America, with a 24% mortality rate. NEC is even more common in premature babies, observed in about 10% of preemies, with a mortality rate over 50%. The exact causes of NEC are not well known, but it is associated with severe inflammation of the gut, causing tissue death or perforation of the intestine. Researchers looking at epidemiology of NEC have noticed that breastfed babies are significantly less likely to develop NEC than formula-fed babies are. In preterm babies fed exclusively formula, NEC was 6 to 10 times more common than in those fed breast milk alone. Researchers attribute this amazing protective effect in large part to, you guessed it, HMOs. Researchers at UC San Diego conducted a study in which neonatal rats fed different milks were purposefully exposed to neck-inducing conditions. The rats were fed either breast milk from their mothers, formula, formula with GOS, a commercially available prebiotic, or formula with HMOs. After 96 hours, the breastfed rats had the highest survival rate of 100%, and those fed regular formula had the lowest survival rate of 73%. Adding GOS to regular formula was able to rescue survival rate by 3% only, while adding HMOs to formula was able to rescue the survival rate all the way up to 95%. The researchers postulate that receptors on either the host or the microbes respond to HMOs, which in turn helps reduce inflammation related to NEC. Similarly, researchers at Johns Hopkins induced NEC in experimental piglets, then fed them either formula without any HMOs formula with 2-FL, a common HMO, formula with 6-SL, another common HMO, or formula with both 2-FL and 6-SL. Neck piglets fed formula supplemented with HMOs had lower neck severity compared to piglets fed regular formula. The researchers further looked at in vitro models and computer models to hypothesize that these HMOs inhibited neck-related inflammatory signaling in the gut. Researchers at Boston College also looked at in vitro models to test the ability of HMOs to reduce inflammation. Here, they added TNF-alpha, a molecule that stimulates inflammation, to human intestinal epithelial cells. Cells were then treated with HMOs or other types of oligosaccharides like GOS and cellobios. They then measured the levels of NF-kappa-B activation, which is an indicator of inflammation. Cells treated with HMOs had a three-fold reduction in NF-kappa-B levels compared to the untreated cells, which is more effective than GOS and cellobios at reducing inflammation. And this all is only the tip of the iceberg. There is a ton of ongoing research studying the exact underpinnings of how different HMOs affect immune system development. We're excited to see and learn more about this, and we promise we'll keep you closely posted. We have one last video coming to sum up our journey of exploring the amazing world of HMOs. 